My first bold prediction for the season is that the Cardinals will finish 2023 with a top three offense in the NL by OPS plus. Why, why do I think this? Well, I look at the team and I look at the depth we have, and I think there's a chance the Cardinals have 10 or 11 hitters that finish with an OPS plus above 100. And the projection systems, by the way, agree with me to those of you who are going to call me crazy. Um, but I think a lot of teams in the NL aren't going to be able to match our depth. And I think last year we finished in the top five. Is a jump possible? Absolutely. When you're not going to give DeYoung quite as many at-bats, Corey Dickerson isn't going to be there to suck up 300 at-bats. And I hate to say it, Yadier Molina is not going to be there to get as many at-bats. Now that you've got Contreras, you've got some better bats in the lineup. I think that's also going to deepen the lineup. That's going to give us a lot more chances to you know, slug, walk, hit for some power. So I'm really excited about this offense. I think we're going to have a top three offense in the NL. Andrew, what have you got? That's pretty bold um, considering some of the offenses when I look around the league. The Braves come to mind as a team that's really scary. Um, the Phillies, we saw that first. I just don't think the Braves, I've got the Braves in my top three as well. I don't think the Phillies or the Mets have the depth by the end of the year to stack up with the Cardinals lineup. Um, and then, I don't know, um, the Phillies, they added Trey Turner to an already pretty deep lineup. So I'm... I'm pretty excited. Well, not really excited because, you know, we saw what they did to us in the postseason, but mm -hmm. it'd be pretty scary to see what they what they come up with this season. Well, they're going to be missing Harper for quite a bit of time. And then Turner, I hate to say it, he, he's a speed and average guy. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be able to keep this up either. That's a big contract they signed him to. And if he can't steal 30-plus bases and hit 300 every year – going to be overpaid. Um, but no, that's my take. I think we'll be a top three offense in the NL by almost any metric, but I'll choose OPS plus because I think that's the best one to use. All right. Next up, Andrew, what is one of your bold predictions for the Cardinals this off season? I'm going with a single player prediction. Most of mine are, are single player predictions. Um, I think Jack Flaherty will have a big bounce back year and finish top five in Cy Young voting. Ooh. Yeah. I think Jack Flaherty is overhated by Cardinal fans. I know some of the, some of the personality things that he does on social media, wearing Lakers stuff to, to the Cardinal games. Mm. It makes people mad, which is a bit confusing to me because just because he wears Lakers stuff doesn't mean he's going to go and sign with, with the Dodgers one day. I, I think he still really likes being in St. Louis. Um, hmm. He was on the verge of tears um, when Wayne Wright was talking about retirement. So I think he, he wants to be here and we could potentially sign him to an extension at some point during the season. But I think Jack Flaherty has a lot of fire and he is in a year in a contract year. He really wants to prove himself and make make some big money. So I think staying healthy is key for him, and I think he's going to finally be able to do that this season. And you, we've seen what he can do when he's right. So top five Cy Young finish for Jack Flaherty. I love that. I, I feel a similar way, and I think Jack Flaherty is key to my 97 win over under, okay? I think Flaherty is key to that because people are pointing at the pitching on this team, and they're saying it's not going to stack up well because there's no ace. But if Flaherty is an ace, this team looks great because Michaelis is a very strong two. If Flaherty's an ace, Michaelis pitches the way he has, Montgomery's your three, Wayno's your four or five, the pitching looks great. The pitching looks like a top five rotation in the NL if, if Flaherty can finish in the top five of Cy Young voting. And, you know, if your offense is up there, your pitching's up there, the team's going to win a lot of games. So I agree. I agree with you that Cardinals fans seem to have a, a strangely weird, bad perception of Flaherty. I don't really get it. Um, he, had, he had the thing where he made the Cardinals, you know, like renew his contract before 2018 and 2019 out of principle. But yeah, I agree. It seems like he wants to be here and he definitely wants to win above all. And regardless, it's his walk year. So he's got to have a great year to make himself some money on the open market anyway. So I agree. I think Flaherty's going to have a really strong year. There was news coming out of camp the other day that they're like, you know, increasing positivity about his health. So I love that take. All right. Next up, uh, I'm going to drop another one in here. I think Brandon Donovan hits 15 home runs this year. I know he only hit five last year, but it was in limited at bats. I think with a full season worth of at bats and some added power, now that he's using a puck knob bat, if you saw him uh, taking some reps this offseason, he says he's increased his bat speed and, you know, 
moved his launch angle up just a little bit. And I think he's going to hit 15 home runs, improve offensively, and solidify his position as a Cardinal. I think he's going to solidify himself in the Cardinals future plans with a really strong year. So that's what I've got. Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, I think Donovan, definitely the, the criticism to him right now is uh, he doesn't hit for a lot of power, but I mean, we saw what the puck knobs can do with Goldie and Arenado. Um, it oh, yeah. really, they both had career years last year. So if he's starting to use that as well and taking that, taking advantage of those veteran uh, mm-hmm. leaders in the clubhouse, I think he could definitely have a breakout year in terms of power, which is brings me to my next prediction, uh, a guy who hits for a lot of power. I think Tyler O'Neill will finish top 10 in MVP voting like he did in 2021. Wow. Yeah. Tyler O'Neill. Last year had a really disappointing season. Um, he was plagued by injuries the entire season mm-hmm. and just didn't didn't really get there. But he still hit quite a few home runs last year. I think it was around 18 or 19. Yeah. Um, so we've seen the power output from him. And I think he was definitely playing hurt a lot last season. But we've been told that he's all healthy, ready to go. He's been working on a new yeah. workout program and he's been cleared by the front office to play in the world baseball classic. So if they have faith for him to go play uh, for team Canada, I have faith for him to play for the Cardinals this year. Um, and I think mm-hmm. he'll return to his old uh, MVP candidate form. I love that. Yeah. I feel a similar way about O'Neill as well. Um, last year he had an OPS that hovered right around 700 super average, you know, but he's got a super high floor. Tyler O'Neill is going to play gold glove defense in left field, and he's fast. He's one of the fastest players on this team and in the National League, to be honest. He's got elite speed on the base paths, elite glove, elite arm out in left field. Tyler O'Neill is the type of guy whose war is going to hover around three, even if he doesn't play super well offensively, as long as he's getting time. And so you're right. I think if he can push his OPS plus back up to where it was in 2021, when he finished with a 144 OPS plus, he's got a great shot at finishing an MVP voting because he's just an inherently valuable player. He's a winning ball player. I feel a similar way about him. Gosh, we're all agreeing. I want some disagreement in here. Maybe you won't agree with me on this one, but I say the Cardinals will finalize an extension with one of their starters by May 1st. Now let's talk a bit about what this means. I'm ruling out Adam Wainwright because I think he's going to retire. I'm ruling out Steven Matz because he's on the books after this year. And I'm not talking about any of the young guys. I think they should extend Palante, but We're not the Braves. We don't do that all the time. So (laughs) what I'm mostly talking about here is one of three guys, Michaelis, Montgomery, or Flaherty. Now, I think Flaherty is going to bet on himself. I think he'll reach the open market, especially if he has the kind of year that Andrew and I think he will. So I'm really talking about Michaelis or Montgomery. I think by May 1st, one of them is going to be signed through the 2024-2025 season. What do you have? Well, if we want to go really bold predictions, I think you have to tell us which one we'll get. That extension. Oh, I'll take Michaelis. I think the team is really comfortable with him and he's already signed an extension with him before. So if I'm correct, Michaelis came over for the 2018 season. Sounds right. I think, yeah, the 2018 season. Mm-hmm. And he was here on a multi year deal, uh, finished that after the 2020 season, signed a three year extension. So I guess he's entering his seventh year of service time with the team. I think I'm, I'm not completely sure on that, but I know his deal will run out after this year and it was a three-year extension that he was signed. So I think number one, he's been here forever and he's already done it. He's already negotiated with the team twice. Uh, Number two, he's been super productive with the Cardinals. He's had his share of, you know, a little bit of injury here and there. Didn't pitch much. Did he pitch at all in the 2020 season actually? I don't think he did. I think he might have he, out or something. Yeah, I don't think he pitched in that season and then was injured for a lot of 2021. But last year looked phenomenal. Looked just like his old self from his early days here. Um, and he's healthy. He's a workhorse. He had over 200 innings, third most in the NL. So I definitely think that it'll be Michaelis. Although I'm not ruling out a Montgomery extension either. He's looked great since he came over from the Yankees in the Bader trade. And the Cardinals love him. Plus, he's left-handed. And he induces a lot of contact. So those are two things the Cardinals love. He's going to get the most out of his gold glove defense behind him. That's what I've got. Yeah, sounds sounds pretty good. I think the Cardinals have to extend at least one of their pitchers before the end of the season because they only have Mets. 
signed on, as you said. I think mm-hmm. Hudson is, is still ARB eligible, but I don't right. know. If he has another rough year. He could be non-tendered. Um, that's that's right. a possibility. Mm-hmm. But my next prediction is going to be about a starting pitcher who is definitely not coming back for the 2024 season. That is Adam Wainwright. He has said he's retiring. Um, and it's a little bit more of a sentimental pick. It's not really a year-long prediction, but I believe Adam Wainwright in 2023 in his final season will throw a no-hitter. Mm. I don't I don't think um, the baseball gods have given us necessarily the ideal circumstances because he should be throwing to Yachty um, if he throws oh, a no-hitter. No. But it is his last year. He's never done it. And I think one of these, one of these days – He's going to get it in 2023. And if we want a really bold prediction, it will be for his 200th win. Oh, my goodness. That'd be special. Wow. Um, Well, the last Cardinals no-hitter was thrown all the way back in 2001. Andrew, do you know who threw that no-hitter? I I should know this. Bud Smith. Yeah. Someone who is, I mean, you never hear that name connected to anything else besides the one no-hitter he threw. Uh, because the, Card- the Cardinals just, you know, hasn't happened in a long time. We've gotten close. We've gotten Walker, one out of a way twice. Absolutely. Michaelis teased it last year. And, oh, my gosh, Cal Mitchell on my player hate list. I'll say it. Um, <laughs> broke it up. Uh, fly ball over Bader's head. Um, but, we've, you know, Waka got really close, I believe, his rookie season. And then he teased it again one night in Pittsburgh back in 2016 or 2018, one of those years. Um, Daniel Ponce de Leon went seven no hit in his debut. So, um, you know, we've had some moments where it's felt like it's possible. Flaherty started to tease it a little bit a couple times in 2019. Um, But you're right. It hasn't happened in over two decades. This will probably be the first one where we disagree. I just, I don't think it's going to happen. But I agree that if anyone on the Cardinals will do it, it will be Wainwright. Uh, because he's the most likely to have a couple complete games every year. I just feel like in those complete games, we usually lose. That has <laughs> happened a couple of record in complete games can't be great because he'll he'll give up like one or two runs, but it'll be a night the Cardinals decide to just not show up at the ballpark offensively. I remember he lost to the Reds last year. Tough. I remember Michaelis um, and Shane McClanahan had a duel in Tampa. Mm. That was the first game under two hours in MLB for like – a decade or so that the, best. the Cardinals lost that game and Michaelis was credited with an eight inning complete game uh it was I believe one nothing so yeah. it does tend to happen well uh, you know but I'll, I'll take unfortunately I'm going to take zero no hitters on the season that'll be the first one we've disagreed with um but I'm going to keep going here my, my prediction is that Jordan Walker will not break camp with the team but I think he receives an at-bat by June 1st and is in the running for Rookie of the Year, hopefully winning it um, come October. I think Jordan Walker, I, I would love to see him on the opening day roster. I'm super excited. His talent is through the roof. He's a fascinating player with a ton of potential. But I don't think he'll break, break camp with the team. I look at what's going on here. Number one, he's a native third baseman. Right. So that's his position. And Nolan Arnato plays third base right now for the Cardinals. And he will for the next, I don't know, six, seven years. So that's blocked. So we convert Jordan Walker to an outfielder. Well, he's only played 30 games as an outfielder so far in his career. And he's got a rocket for an arm. Right. Um, he, he looks capable out there glove wise, but I don't think his defense is quite ready to play at the major league level especially if you're just going to put him in as a starter, because the last thing you want to do is bring Jordan Walker up to be a bench bat. You know, I'd rather him get the everyday reps in triple a again, Jordan Walker also hasn't played in triple a before. And his numbers in double a while awesome, aren't exactly skip triple a numbers. He posted a 124 OPS plus last year, which is super strong following up his 146, I believe from 2021, super strong. But again, that's not exactly skip AAA numbers. I would like to see him play at AAA for at least April, maybe May as well. And that's why I do not think he will break camp with the team. He needs to sharpen his defense a little bit. He needs to continue to get some work in the outfield just because of inexperience. And maybe I'd like to see him face some AAA pitching. Yeah, I think unless Jordan Walker has an unbelievable spring, something terrible will have to happen for him to break camp with the Cardinals, be an injury mm-hmm. to Carlson or Newbar or O'Neill. 
Um, I think if the Cardinals want him with the team, he's going to have to have a starting job every day. And I don't think they can guarantee that with the roster currently yeah. as constructed. Um, I remember last season, Nolan Gorman was called up mid season because yeah. he was struggling. Um, and I think the only way Walker uh, gets called up currently is if an injury or some player is really struggling. Uh, mm, I'm going to push back on that a bit. I think Walker's going to get called up regardless at some point because he's going to force the issue. Mm. The Cardinals want to win this year. They, they have to win. They have a lot. You know, Adam Wainwright's going to be gone now. It, it's time to win. Um, and I think they know that and they want to contend. And so if Walker forces the issue and is the clear best option, I do think he'll get playing time. I think this year, more than ever, they're going to be willing to give playing time to who deserves it. It's going to be a meritocracy. Um, and I think if Walker deserves it, he's going to get that time. He'll have to run with the opportunity. He doesn't just get 500 at bats regardless. Um, but I think he can get called up without an injury or big time struggles. Oh yeah, I, I was I was trying to to say that if he were to to perform really well, then then he would probably get called up, but not not right now. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely not right now. If he has a really good spring, I think he could potentially break camp with the team, but he would have to see a lot of time at DH or a platoon with, say, Carlson mm-hmm. or O'Neill. Yeah, um, I don't think I don't think he's going to get the right field spot because with my my next prediction, I believe Lars Newpar will make the All Star team. Um, I love it. I don't think knew it was a fluke. I think a lot of the stat cast numbers, I uh, look at his baseball savant page. It's covered. So much in- red, so much red on that page. He's phenomenal. He hits the ball hard. Launch angle is really good. Um, oh, yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be just fine next year. He didn't get lucky. Walking. Said. Yeah. Um, Lars Newbar will be an all-star, maybe even the starting right fielder over some, uh, other outfielders around the National League like Juan Soto oh. and Mookie Betts. I don't know. Stacked you, position. You want to get really bold, but uh, <laughs> I think I love that. Him. I love that. Yeah, I think Newt's going to have a super strong year. He was awesome to watch last year. One of MLB's best players after June first. Uh, I agree. I'm a big believer in Newt. I've been professing that all off season. All right, my last bold prediction is that the Cardinals' most impactful rookie, at least for the first half, maybe the whole year, will not be Jordan Walker. It's not going to be someone you've heard a lot about. It's not going to be Walker because I don't think he's going to come up right away. It's not going to be Mason Wynn. He's need a little more time in the oven before he's done. It's not going to be Ivan Herrera, another guy you've heard a lot about. No, it's going to be Freddy Pacheco. I think Freddy Pacheco breaks camp with the big league team, a la Andre Pallante, Jordan Hicks. We've got a pattern doing that with rookies. Rookie relievers who catch fire in spring get to break camp with the team. Pacheco, high octane arm, throws 97, 98, tons of movement, tons of break. He's going to be a stud. I think he's going to break camp with the team, and I think he's going to immediately make an impact. And I think by, I don't know, mid-July, August, you're going to be looking at him in high leverage situations. Is he, is he going to be in your circle he, of trust? He will be in the circle of trust, hopefully. Yeah. He will be there, though. A lot like the Palante of last year. You remember Palante breaks camp with the team. A lot of people didn't even know who he was. Ends up being epic. So I think we're going to make the same decision with Pacheco. I'm a big believer. I'm not I'm not really a prospect guy. I, I don't keep up to that as much as you do. I'll admit it. But that does sound like an interesting name to, to keep a lookout for this spring. Mm-hmm. All right. So for my final prediction... I think the Cardinals at the trade deadline will make a splash. Um, they were in, they were in on Juan Soto last year up until the very end, and you have to imagine that if they were willing to give up whatever prospect package Washington was asking for, that they would have extended Juan Soto. So I feel like that's not really an issue. But I think the Cardinals will make a trade for a big time starting pitcher. I think they'll see Jack Flaherty uh, blossom. But they'll they'll think that he might need a little bit more support with another another ace at that the head of that rotation. And whether that's a, a Zach Gallen or a Shane Bieber, mm-hmm. if Cleveland struggles early, I could see them being in on either of those two names. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to say it again, but I, I think I have to. Uh, Shohei Otani is definitely another name that we could be could be seeing. 
um, being floated around at the trade deadline. It'd just but, be fun uh, being on that guy. It'd just be fun to have the rumors going around like Juan Soto last year. Yeah, and he also he also fits another another spot in that in that lineup. Uh, makes that lineup very very long. Uh, but instant favorites. Yeah, uh, the Cardinals I think will instead of trading for say a Jose Quintana or Jordan Montgomery, who we who we very much appreciate over here, but I think they're going to get a big name starting pitcher. Well, welcome to my not so bold prediction. The Cardinals will trade for Rich Hill at the deadline, and that'll be all the pitching help they add because they're going to say they believe in the staff. I hope you're right, but I think it'll be Rich Hill. It fits a pattern. Wade LeBlanc, J.A. Happ, John Lester, Jose Quintana, Rich Hill. What do all these guys have in common? They were 40, almost 40. They were soft tossers, and they filled a spot in the Cardinals rotation at the end of their careers. I don't, I don't want to hear any more Jose Quintana slander, though. That, uh, that guy was so good. Thank you. I know. I miss that guy so much. I wish they brought him back. I was very upset when he signed with the Mets. Well, we've also got a couple quick hitters. Um, Gravy left us his predictions for the Cardinals this season. We're just going to go through those real quick. Andrew, I want you to give me 10 seconds of content for each one, followed by a yes or a no. First up, I'm going to say I'm going to say no to that. I think he'll finish with a low threes. Uh, he hasn't finished with a sub three in like who knows how long, probably since like 2014, 2013. Mm-hmm. I don't really I don't really think he'll have that much of a return to form because he's already been pretty solid for the last couple of years. One or two bad starts, and you know, that's not happening. He is also working with a different catcher for the first time in his career. Um, I do believe in magic. Um, I think he'll throw a no hitter, but I don't think he'll have a sub three ERA. I agree. All right, Flaherty, 10 plus wins. I'll take this one. Here we go. Quick hitter. Uh, I think Flaherty has every chance to win 10 plus games. It's just going to be a matter of whether he gets run support, which I think he will. He usually does in the past. I'll take Flaherty. I'll take the over on that. Flaherty easily gets 10 wins and finishes in Cy Young voting. All right, Andrew, here we go. Arnado wins the MVP. I think it's possible. In my predictions that we had on our socials, I didn't have Arnado as MVP. I had Juan Soto because I was trying not to be like too biased, you know. <laughs> um, but I think it's I think it's really possible. I don't think Goldie Goldie will win it again this year because he's he showed some signs of regression towards the end of last year, and I don't know. Uh, he could prove me wrong by winning it again. That would be that would be pretty nice. Awesome. So I think Arnado supplements really good offense with elite defense. Um, I think mm. that really will help him get to an MVP. Even if he ne- isn't the best hitter in the national league, if the best hitter in the national league is say Juan Soto, as I predicted, um, Arnado could still surpass him because Juan Soto is a below average defender, despite being a good Absolutely. One candidate. Yeah. I think we look at all the value that Arnado brings to the table. He's got a great chance. He's got a super high floor. He's going to win the gold glove every year. It seems I think he's nine for nine now in his career. He has never not won a gold glove. So I wouldn't bet against him to break it now. I wonder if he'll challenge Brooks Robinson's record of, I believe, 16 gold gloves. There's uh, one of record of 10 straight to start a career that he's definitely. Oh, yeah, he will tie that. And then there's Ozzy's cardinal record of 13 consecutive. Yeah. Um, so Arnado's getting up near some of those records. We'll have to see. But uh, it's not too far-fetched, but I do not think he'll win the MVP ultimately. All right, next up, Walker wins Rookie of the Year. I'll take this one. I'm going to say no, unfortunately. I think he's going to finish in the top three, a la Donovan last year. But I think the fact that he's not coming up as early as some people think will definitely hold him back. Sure, we've seen guys come up midseason like Jordan Alvarez and capture the award, but to do so requires absolutely mashing. Unfortunately, while I think Walker's good, I can't just predict him to put up MVP numbers. I'm not that delusional. And so I do not think he'll be able to make up for lost time. Uh, he could win it the following year if he doesn't get enough at bats, but I do think he'll exceed his rookie eligibility. You've also just got a loaded group in the NL right now. Corbin Carroll is going to come up and he's going to get a whole season's worth of plate appearances down in Arizona. And so I think that's someone who, you know, if he's got a two month head start on Walker, just not sure how Walker is able to catch him. And then to finish things off, Christian thinks Tommy Edmond is going to hit over 290 this year. 
Andrew, what do you think about that? I think with a shift ban, it's definitely possible. I don't think Tommy Edmond mm-hmm. is as shifted as most players, but um, he struggled a lot hitting lefty, and lefties tend to be the hitters that get um, hurt the most by by shifts. Um, Tommy Edmond has shown flashes of being a 290-plus hitter um, when he came up. I think it's definitely possible, especially if he's been putting it in, in the work with uh, Nolan Arenado at his hitting lab, which I'm not I'd sure if he has, but... Uh, well, if Tommy Edmond hits 290, he's going to be a super valuable guy because he was a top 15 player by war last year um, with very average offensive output, 108 OPS plus. If he can increase that to 120, 122, that, that kind of area right there, he could be looking at you know serious MVP consideration considering the fact that he's as likely to win the platinum glove as anybody else. Um, could be pretty awesome. All right, so that'll conclude our segment on Cardinals' bold predictions.